Hello everybody and welcome back to the Maniacal Mini. Today we are working on the Scriptor Mortis from the Arena of Shades box set. So as you can see, I have the model primed black and I'm just coming over the entire thing with Badger Steinal Res white primer. The next color I'm going to be using through the airbrush is Blood Angel's Red Contrast Paint. This is going to set up the transition for the wisps away from the body towards the end and bottom of the model. The next color I'm going to be using is Abaddon Black from Games Workshop. This is going to be covering all of the bones. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing the skull right here. And we're also going to do the bones for the stand that the book is going to sit on a little bit later. For our first highlight on the bone color, that's going to be Mornfang Brown from Games Workshop. I'm going for a little bit more of a muddy tone to these bones, uh, make them look a little bit more realistic, which is going to be further enhanced a little bit later. The second highlight for our bones is Morgast Bone, also from Games Workshop. Just remember to stick to the most raised edges of the features. We don't want to cover everything that we have put down so far. We just want to add a little bit of an enhancement to the actual color and striations of the bones. Moving on to the actual skin for the body now, the first thing I'm going to be using is Dead Flesh from Scale 75's Instant Colors range. Uh, this is going to set up a nice blue tone underneath where we're going to enhance it in the next step. And now that our blue has had some time to dry, I'm grabbing some Plague Bearer Flesh from Games Workshop. And since this is kind of an opaque color, it's going to allow some of that blue that we put down just previously to shine through underneath and give us this really sickly green look. Bringing in some Abaddon Black again from Games Workshop, now we are going to block in all of the candles that are all over the model. As you can see, I've also painted the smoke black. Now I'm coming in with a reverse zenithal highlight with white from the bottom. This is going to help set up our green smoke effect in a little bit. To help us get started on our OSL effect on the candle flames, we are going to be laying down some nuclear white. And now that we have taken all of our proper steps, I am bringing in Lime Green Ink from Scale 75, and this is going to be the base for our OSL effect. Just to bring this up to another level, we are going to add some white ink from Scale 75. This is a very opaque white, so it's going to leave that ink green ink that we had laid down previously underneath as we move into one more step to really enhance this OSL. Grabbing some of my green fluorescent paint, this is also from Scale 75, I'm going to be laying this down over all of the white ink that I had just previously laid down, so that includes the lantern as well as the candle flames. The final step here, as we move into our second act, we are just going to be grabbing black metal from scale 75. That is going to be used for the candelabra that is literally through his body. Um, so don't forget that there is a little piece underneath as well as for his lantern. Thank you. 
And as I let all those other things dry from our previous act, I'm going to be starting on the base now. As you can see, I've laid some gravestones, some bones, a skull, and a little bit of corkboard to help build up a little bit of volume to the base. Um, right now, I'm just coming over all of those gravestones. That is going to be with Basilicanum Gray contrast paint from Games Workshop. I didn't want the roses that are on this gravestone to contradict with the red that we laid down on our actual model, so I'm going to be switching to Flesh Terror Red Contrast Paint from Games Workshop to pick those out. Grabbing Victorian Brass from Scale 75's Copper Selection, we are going to be laying this down over all of the trimmings on the gravestones. I really like the skull that I picked out for this one because it has this bandana that goes over his head. Um, obviously he was wearing that when he died, so I'm going to use some snake bite leather to pick that out around the skull. Following the same steps that we did for the bone on the model, we are actually going to be bringing back in some of that Mornfang Brown for the bones, and we're going to go through the similar style of coating over that black primer that we laid down on the bones earlier to create a very nice modeled look on those bones. Final quick highlight, bringing back in that Morgast bone from Games Workshop, we're just going to be adding some striations to the bones, adding a little bit more variation in color and tones, and setting it up for some weathering a little later. And the last thing to finish up this base here, we're going to be grabbing some dark earth texture paint from Green Stuff World that they were kind enough to send me. Uh, I'm going to be laying this down over everything on the model, being careful not to cover up any of the bones or the gravestone. We're just going to make it look really natural and clean. And starting on the book now, we are going to grab some Agaro Stunes contrast paint from Games Workshop. This is going to add a very realistic, almost weathered page effect. Um, so we don't even really have to do much when it comes to weathering later. Um, this is going to set up and it's going to make it look really natural. As we move into some Blood Angels Red, I'm going to be adding some of the bigger lettering um, that you can see on the page. I'm also going to be adding this little diagram up top, uh, you know, a little bloody diagram. And we're going to be moving into um, adding in some of those um, scribbled black lines. And for that, I'm going to be grabbing some Abaddon Black again from Games Workshop. Uh, freehanding is really simple when you break it down. Um, you just want to use a very fine tip brush, get it as close to the tip as possible, and then just scribble away. Uh, make sure you add proper distancing, all that stuff, so that it looks really fresh. Um, bringing back in snake bite leather, this is going to just cover the binding of the book. Um, we're also going to be adding a, another step in just a second. I'm going to be just grabbing some Victorian brass for this last step, um, just adding it, as you can see, to the corners. They have these like metal brackets, um, as well as the center binding of the book, um, just picking out all those little details. So we are moving into our final details and weathering section now. I'm just grabbing a little bit of that lime green ink. Um, as you can see, I'm covering the candle flame that I didn't do on his book, but I'm also re-enhancing all of the other ones that we did, um, adding a little bit along the edges to make it look like that glow is reflecting. Um, we're going to be grabbing in some black Templar. Um, I watered this down with a little bit of water. It is a contrast paint, so you don't have to water it down too much, but I don't want it to be too harsh. So I'm just going to be adding that to the tips of all the flames um, just to have that little black smoky look. The last thing I'm going to be doing is grabbing some Nash Drag Yellow Contrast Paint. This is going to be for the um, feather on his quill. Uh, I just wanted it to stand out and be really different from everything else that was around him, and that Nash Drag Yellow really stood out perfectly, so that's the one I chose. 
Now I'm going to be grabbing some streaking grime from AK Interactive. This is literally going to coat the entire model. Um, I did thin this down just a little bit with some mineral spirits so it flows a little bit better. Um, but as you can see, I'm just going to coat the entire model. After letting it dry for just a little bit, I'm going to be grabbing a Q-tip with some mineral spirits. You're probably going to need quite a few for this model, um, but I'm going to just start working that streak and grime back off, leaving it in the recesses. Um, it's also going to tone down a lot of areas like the skin you're going to see. Um, it's going to give this really unnatural, like see-through look. Um, it really, really cool effects. Um, but I'm going to try some two new products now um, that I was sent to actually test out. These are the Dirty Down products. This is Dirty Down Rust that I'm laying down over the um, candelabra and his lantern. This stuff is amazing. Um, it goes on so smooth and so clear, and then you can actually watch it build up. Um, the same thing with the verdigris that I'm putting down here. Um, it's really, really cool to just slap it down and watch the actual rust and verdigris grow by itself. And um, it's super easy to work with. I highly recommend them, especially if you do this style of painting. Um, and it's super easy to clean up. As you can see here, I'm just using water and a Q-tip. I'm just clearing off a little bit of of the um, front and the most raised areas uh, just because I want it to look like somebody's been polishing them over time. Uh, the next step I'm going to be doing is just to add a couple of these leaves from Green Stuff World um, just to sell like the look of the base and, and the kind of area that he's in. But um, this is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Thank you so much for checking it out. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you are not already so we can continue to bring you videos just like this one. Help you get your models onto the table a little bit quicker and looking really dope. So thank you guys so much again and we will catch you in the next one.